And do you think it's still worth it focusing on binary exploitation in 2021 or is everything all web nowadays? Very diffi difficult question. I don't know. It depends on what you want to do, I guess. Um, of course, you can still have a career in it. Uh, there's a lot you have to learn, though. Um, I personally, it, it, I think it's obviously easier to be a web developer. So, I mean, being a developer, for example, is easier. Um, uh, it's easier to do web pen testing or bug bounty, probably. It's probably harder to find jobs and stuff with binary exploitation, but the, they exist, of course, so it depends on what you want to do. Um, if you are obviously really good in it, um, you belong to a very small group that is really good in that. Um, and if you, so if you're really good in that, then you will have great jobs available to you as well. So it depends. Then there's the other reason why I'm interested in it. So I'm not good enough on a level where I can do binary exploitation, you know, state of the art exploitation or so forth. But it's not that important to me. I want to understand IT more. I want to have a broad understanding of everything. And understanding a basic level of binary exploitation, maybe a bit more than the basic level, you know, maybe go a bit further like the pseudo series here. Um, that really gives me a much better understanding of everything. And I feel like I can transfer some knowledge into other areas as well. It just gives me a better understanding of how computers work. And so, and I think that's important and that's something I try to um, teach from my YouTube channel. I'm jumping between all those different topics, hardware, web, crypto, uh, binary exploitation, like all these different topics I show because I really, really believe that if you have a broad knowledge of these things, it's helpful. It's a little bit like in school, how uh, you have to learn a lot of common knowledge about all kinds of different areas, just so you get set up like as a proper human, knowing from everything a little bit. And now just focusing on IT, I feel it's the same thing. If you know from everything a little bit, you will be, you know, better. Um, so that's something I believe in. And then the second reason why it's also important for me is, yes, my job is mostly web audits, but once in a while, it happens rarely, but once in a while a client has maybe a small implementation in C or C++ or some other native language. Um, so for example, I remember somebody, uh, we had a client doing uh, cloud stuff and cloud, st you know, web, it was like a web service thing. Um, so obviously that's very web stuff and very abstract cloud thing, but they had a small component written in C, which they wrote in C because it had to be incredibly fast. So they were parsing data coming in and they wanted to be that really, really fast. So they wrote that part in C. And if I didn't have basic binary exploitation knowledge, then I wouldn't have found a buffer overflow in that component. With basic knowledge, I was able to, you know, set it up with AFL, um, and fuzz the binary and write a small proof of concept that just crashed the binary with a bad input packet. And that was obviously very valuable to the client that we were able to do that. And those are the kind of things where I think you as a web pen tester can still grow. So if you have covered the basic web stuff, you know, it's beneficial to look into a little bit of other areas because maybe you have a client with a component like this and you could say, sorry, we don't do that or I, I, I can't do that, or you just ignore it and not test that part at all. Sometimes you don't know these things. Like you, you would say, maybe you would tell the client early, but the client said they have a web app. They maybe didn't really know or didn't think of this small component they had in C. So now you have this test already and now you want to provide good value. So yeah, these, those things happen rarely, but they do happen. And in those moments, I am grateful that I have a basic understanding and I can, you know, obviously I'm not an expert. They didn't pay me also to be an expert now in this area, but I'm happy that I can, you know, find a cool bug like this. So kind of, does that make sense? Oh, also it depends again in kind of industry where you want to go. So if you go, if you want to work in the automotive, automotive industry or like industry, what is it called? Like SCADA systems, like industry 
electronics industry, computers, like controlling machines and things like this. You know, in Germany, for example, we have a huge industry called Maschinenbau. I don't know what's the translation of that, like building, developing engineering machines for, you know, manufacturing plants and so forth. There's a lot of electronics and a lot of code in, in that. And those things integrate with sensors and wireless technologies and networks and so forth. And those things run firmware and other native code written in C. Um, and, you know, they often don't look into security that much. But, you know, so these are areas where obviously those things can become very beneficial. Yeah. So long story short, it really depends on what you want to do. Um, it's not easy to answer. Certainly, there are more jobs for web. Certainly, I believe, I think web is a lot easier to get into and so forth. And so if you look for something more job security wise, it's probably web is the, definitely the safer choice. But um, if you are young, you know, do whatever is fun to you. Start with binary exploitation you have in many years ahead of you. Um, you can easily transition into web at some point um, once you get closer to actually trying having to find a job and so forth. How is the typical workload in InfoSec? I'm a senior software engineer. Um, uh, it's very difficult because I don't have a traditional job in InfoSec. I'm a freelancer. I work for with a great company. Uh, uh, very free jobs, very technical, very small, um, you know, very atypical. So I cannot speak like really from experience. I would assume all jobs are stressful and terrible. <laughs>